the TikTok. I've started. Really? Hello, friends. Welcome to Thursday Night Bible Study with Kimmy. Hello, hello. When y'all hop in, make sure you say hey um, so that I can say hey back. Happy Thursday. I hope you've had a great day. Hello, Alyssa. Hello, y'all. I'm so excited to join y'all tonight for Bible study. We're going to do a super quick little session. Um, it is, I think I got, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, before I start talking, before I start jabbling, I'm going to um, let a couple more people join in. If you say hey, I'll say hey back. Um, hey, Brandy. Hello, Cassie. Um, Colin is here with me. So if y'all see me look over there and talk to him, that's who's over there. You could come and join us. <laughs> um, okay, hello, Kara. Oh, gosh, girl, yes, text me. Um, life has been crazy, y'all, like absolutely crazy. I started a new semester of school on Monday, so I've just been busy with that. And my sisters um, have recently moved, um, and so I have been super busy helping them with the move and whatnot. That's where I am tonight. Um, my sister's birthday is today, and um, will you turn that down? <laughs> My sister's birthday is today, and so we just went out to eat to Mexican, and that's why I'm a couple minutes late, so y'all forgive me for being a little bit late. Um, we had to celebrate her, and I'm going to make this a quick little Bible study session because we still have, like, gifts to do, and I got some chocolate chip cookies and vanilla ice cream for dessert, and y'all know I'm a sucker for dessert, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I did not want to fail y'all again. I know I wasn't here last Thursday. Um, I had a football game, and then I didn't get home until super late, and I was just like... We're going to have to do a rain check on that Bible study. So, thank y'all for joining me. I'm so excited for tonight. Um, we are continuing. I can't talk, obviously. In um, We're continuing in our series called Besties from the Beginning. If you're new here, let me just give you a quick little explanation of what it is. Um, so, I wanted to create a series that was kind of like a foundational um, kind of study of the Bible of where you would begin if you had never touched a Bible a day in your life. One of my number one questions is, Kimmy, where do I start? I've never read a Bible. I've never touched a Bible. I don't even know what it's talking about. Or maybe you have a little bit here and there, but you were confused and you just put it down and it's just become, you know, a piece of decor in your room more than something that you open every single day. And so I wanted to create a series where we just come on here and we just read together and we just really suck up God's Word and understand what what he would have for us through scripture. Um, and so that's what we're doing. We have been in the book of John, so we are starting with the Gospels. I always recommend that you start with the Gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you're probably probably like, um, am I still good? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're probably like, why the last book of the Bible, Kimmy? Personally, John is my favorite, and I always feel like um, when you read the book of John that it just kind of gives you a, um, like, image, illustration, I guess, if you will, of God's love for us, and it also kind of acts as a bookend of Jesus' life, um, his birth through his ministry, um, and his birth or his ministry through his death and resurrection and i just love it because it's very plain to read very simple and easy to read and it kind of gives you that background knowledge before you dive into further uh, stuff in your bible so that's why we're doing this um so tonight i don't have my bible i have my sister's bible because i forgot mine and y'all know i'm like kind of crazy when it comes to my bible we were just talking about a minute ago um I actually left my Bible at church. We had started going to a new church um, a couple Sundays ago. Well, this that's been about a month ago, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. It's been a while back. <laughs> and I left my Bible at church, and I, y'all, forg Lord, forgive me. 
I about went crazy because I was like, oh my gosh, I left it there and then I never went back. And so that next Sunday, obviously I have more than one. So I went back that next Sunday and I went to the man. I was like, please tell me you have a lost and found. And there it was sitting high up on the shelf. And Colin said, you would have thought that thing was a thousand. <laughs> what did you say? Something about a million dollars or something. But, oh, I'm holding my socks. Um, but y'all, that Bible means a lot to me. And I painted it and it's been through it's been with me through some really tough and really happy times and i can't believe i forgot it tonight but i did um and so i'm using my sisters so this would be i can't remember i don't know the translation of this bible sometimes i don't say it on the spine um it's an niv okay so niv my bible at home is a csv so it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how it differs from mine at home um if y'all are on here, make sure that you share the live so your friends can um, join in on Bible study. I always say when you share the live, it acts as a yield sign at the gates of hell because you're yielding people from the gates of hell to learn more about Jesus and to understand him and to get into God's word. So, um, the last thing I want to share before we jump in to chapter 4 of the book of John is all of my Bible studies are recorded as they're being recorded right now. That was, I shouldn't have said that. They're recorded and then they are posted on YouTube. So um, I post them all on YouTube. All you have to do, go to YouTube in the search bar, type Kimberly Wallace and my channel will come up. And I have them listed by series and they get posted the night of Bible study. So if you have to jump off of here, if you have, you know, like, um, I don't know, you got to put the babies to sleep or got to wake up early and you can't be staying on here till whatever time, that's fine. I promise you I will not be mad um, and you can just view it on YouTube tomorrow or use that as a chance to share with your friends. I have so many people, um, Miss Steph, my sweet little bestie, um, one of her girls at work, Danielle, if you're on here, hey girl, um, she was talking about how she could go back to YouTube and watch what she missed and I finally was able to get back into that and I uploaded like part three of Esther, I think it was, and some other things. So it is up to date. So this will be on there tonight. Uh, girl, I was so upset. I was so upset. We just studied chapter four in small group this week. Yay! It's so good to like, it's, do y'all remember, I don't know, like if you were, if you went to college or if you're in college or even in high school when you would have two different classes and one class would be talking about a subject and then the other class would somehow be also talking about that subject. I remember in a lot of my biology classes, like we would talk about something and then anatomy, we would talk about the same thing. It always gives you a better understanding. So it's always good to um, like read, you know, study one part of your Bible, but also go to other translations, also go to other podcasts, other Bible studies and get a better understanding of what you've read. So my ring, it's like a little cross and then it has my monogram. Um, thank you, girl. When do you do Bible studies? So Bible studies are Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if I do not show on here, I always go check my Instagram story because I always update there. So make sure you follow me on Instagram because that is where I will give my little updates of if it's canceled, if it's delayed, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so we're going to jump into the book of John chapter four. Um, remember, we kind of talked a little bit about who um, John the Baptist was. Um, just kind of giving like a little preview of what we have been talking about. Um, who John the Baptist was, we talked about the miracles that Jesus started to perform. Um, the first one was that he turned um, the water into wine. And, you know, all these people were kind of um, uncertain on who Jesus was. He was claiming to be... Um, he was claiming to be a Messiah, and these people were like, who are you? And then John would say, you know, this one was a person, this one was the one before me. And they're like, wait, a, wait, hold up a minute. Like, how was someone here before you, but you've been here the whole time? They were confused. They were lost. They um, doubted Jesus and all that kind of stuff. But when Jesus started performing these miracles, they started to kind of um, cock a brow, kind of like raise a brow. Raise a brow is a better term for that. Y'all, I'm from the South. Uh, <laughs> cock a brow, ain't that right? Like, if you cock your brow. Anyways, um, they started to raise a brow. So, um, they're like, who is this person? And how is he doing all these miracles? And they started to follow Jesus because they were seeing that he was actually kind of putting the money where his mouth was, if you will. He was showing people that he could do all of these miracles and all this stuff. So, we're going to go to chapter 4. I'm going to pray real quick. And we are going to... Um, read that whole chapter and that's all we're going to do tonight and then we're going to just keep going through this series. 
Um, so let's go to prayer. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for this day and thank you for allowing me to have this platform to um, just share your word, share your goodness and glory. Lord, may um, anything that comes out of my mouth simply and strictly share um, what you would have for us. Nothing of my flesh, Lord, but everything of you, Lord, decrease me and increase you. Uh, thank you for each girl on here. Um, thank you for just once again giving this opportunity and this platform to just share your word. Lord, may um, you speak to the hearts of those on here. In your sweet and precious name, I pray. Amen. Um, okay. I think I already did. Oh, that's right. Where are you? You have to comment or something. There we go. Um, so it's 9 Eastern Standard Time, girly. I'm trying to find you. There we go. Okay, you should be on there. Okay, sorry, y'all. I had to add Colin as a moderator. Because, you know, the devil tries to attack in all good situations. And sometimes there's just some comments on here that we just don't need to put a damper on our parade. Um, yes, girl, I just put a moderator. Okay, so let's jump on. Um, chapter four. So what we're going to do is we're just going to read through it. Um, I always preface this. I'm just assuming that I do have some new people on here because I'm seeing some names I ain't never seen. So thank you for being here. Um, but I want to first just state the fact that I am no theologian. The, yeah, I'm no theologian. I don't know my Bible from front to back. To be quite frank with you, I don't know every book of the Bible like in order. Um, hey, Hannah. And I just want to say that it's okay. It's okay to read your Bible and to be confused. It's okay to read your Bible and be like, what was this supposed to mean? Or what did this mean? It's okay to dive deeper into your Bible. Some of the most popular, most famous theologians, they don't know their Bible front to back. No one is going to know what God is trying to say unless it's God himself, but he never would have put his word forth for his own uh, children, his own creation, if it wasn't something that we couldn't understand. So I just read it, some names I just totally butcher, and that's okay. That's okay. That's who I am, and yeah. Oh, hey, Mary. Hey, Heather. Okay, so chapter four, we're in the book of John. If you're looking for it, it's between Luke and Acts, right? Yeah. Okay. So now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was gaining and baptizing more disciples than John. Okay, so Jesus was starting to gain more disciples and baptize more disciples than John was doing. And John is called John the Baptist. And Jesus is starting to baptize more people than John the Baptist is. <clears throat> it says, although in fact it was not Jesus who baptized, but his disciples. So it wasn't Jesus, it was his disciples who were baptizing. So he left Judea. Judea? 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 Is that right? <laughs> Sorry. I'm telling y'all, I might butcher something. And went back once more to Galilee. Um, now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sichar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So he leaves Judea. He goes back to Galilee. He goes to this plot of land that Jacob had given his son Joseph. And there was a well there. A lot of y'all have read this story. And this is probably one of my favorite stories or parts, chunks of the Gospels. Um, and it says, um, there was a well there. And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. And it was about noon. So it was lunchtime. So he's taken this journey. Y'all, back then we didn't have Teslas. We didn't have all this crazy transportation and stuff that we have now. Jesus literally walked from Judea to Galilee. And my Bible has a map, which I love. Because if you really go back and you look at the journeys that some of the people, um, some of the main people in the Bible took. Like when we uh, talked about Ruth and... Um, what was Ruth's mother-in-law? Y'all gonna have to remind me. Ruth and, um, I can't think of her name. But Ruth and her mother-in-law took, y'all, it took them forever to get back to where they were going. So Jesus was tired. So he gets to this land. He sees a well and he goes to sit down just to take a, take a little break, take a little pause. Um, and so it says it was noon. Naomi, yes, that's who I'm thinking about. Thank y'all. Um, so when a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? 
His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. So Jesus is alone. He's taking a break. He sits down. And this Samaritan woman, this just regular old woman, she comes and she goes to get some water, to draw some water up from the well. And Jesus speaks out to her and he says, Will you give me something to drink? I'm tired. I don't want to get up and I need something to drink. I'm thirsty. Um, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritan. So at this time, this kind of shows us how um, the relationship, like it just says, the relationship between Jews and just the Samaritans there. Um, and so she's like, hold up, wait a minute. You're a Jew. You're a man Jew on top of that. And you're asking me for a drink. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that ask you for a drink, and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you given you living water. I'm going to read that again. It says, Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. So basically saying, if you knew who I was, you would be asking me Sorry, y'all. My phone's about to die. <laughs> so verse 11 says, the woman says, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? So she's questioning this. She said, okay, like you're telling me that you would, if I would have asked you for a drink of water, you would have gotten me living water. But where, where you don't have a pail, you don't have a bucket. Where are you going? What are you going to put this water in? How would you have given me this water? Basically, she's questioning his authority. She's questioning his character, who is a person. She's probably confused because probably all her life, she has known that there is not supposed to be any association between Jews and Samaritans. And she continues on, or it continues on, um, and she says, uh, Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? Yeah, probably thinks this man is crazy. Drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock. Verse 13 says, Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. So what is basically saying is, y'all, no matter how much water you drink now, no matter how much of a thirst you quench, you're going to continue to be thirsty. Like you could drink 20 million gallons tonight. I don't recommend you doing that. Your cells will explode. But <laughs> you could do that and still tomorrow you're going to be thirsty. Basically what Jesus is saying here is that if you got the water from me, if you considered me your living water, you would never thirst again. So he's kind of given this analogy of his power, who God is. And if you accept me as your living water, if you ask me for the living water, then you will never thirst again. I will quench your thirst. I will be simply enough for you. Um, and so um, I'm trying to find y'all. I always lose my spot. Um and then he says, Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming back here to draw water. <laughs> so she's basically saying, Okay, go ahead and give me that water because um, I don't want to keep lugging this bucket up here. I don't want to keep having to come up here and draw this water. Look, give me this water. Like, give me this water that's going to quench my, my thirst for eternity. Um. And he told her, go, call your husband and come back. So she says, I have no husband, she replies. So she is not um, married. And she says, it's just me. It's just me, Jesus. Um, and Jesus said to her, you are right. When you say you have no husband, the fact is, is you have five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What, what you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Um, verse 21 says, Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in the truth. 
Verse 25 says, The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So he reveals his self right there in front of this Samaritan woman. She's confused the whole entire time. She's like, hold up, who are you? Um, I'm in chapter 4. She's like, hold up, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you asking me for a favor? We're not supposed to associate with you. Then she's like, okay, like you have something for me. Do you realize how interested the Samaritan woman be becomes when she finds out that Jesus can provide her something? And that's kind of what I was getting at with this certain chapter is, yes, there's so many more themes that we can see throughout this chunk of scripture. But one of the things that I would just really want to point out is the interest that provokes itself when Jesus starts to reveal who he is and what he can do for people. So many people do not show interest or, you know, they're just like, they just turn their cheek, I guess is what I'm trying to say. They will turn their cheek. They're so quick to turn turn, turn their head and not show any interest when nothing is benefiting them. But when Jesus begins to show that he is someone and he has something to offer for her, she begins to raise a brow. She begins to be interested. And she's like, hey, give me that living water that you say that you are. Give me that living water that you can provide. And basically, Jesus goes into this whole spiel about, you know, there will come a time where you will neither worship in Jerusalem or worship, worship up here on this mountain, that the Messiah will come and all this, you know, kind of stuff that we just read. And she's like, yeah, I know he's coming. I know there's a Messiah. Everybody in my land has talked about a Messiah. You don't have to tell me about it again. And then Jesus hits her with this big kind of kapow. This is kind of like a mic drop kind of moment, if you will. And he says, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. Exactly, Mary. When the world falls apart, they want it and will take part. Exactly. Some people, it takes for them to get to a certain point. Um, I just imagine this woman just hauling this heavy bucket. You know, she's having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and draw water for her family, draw water for her, you know, livestock that she may tend to, whatever it may be. And she's just kind of, maybe, I feel like too that she's probably tired too. And she comes to this well and she sees this man. And first of all, like, can we just, um, can we just, like, see, path, see through the fact that Jesus spoke to her? And that probably just, like, she would probably want to drop, drop her jaw at that point because she was like, we're not supposed to associate with you. Um, but she was also an outcast amongst her people, yes. So she was probably tired. She was a Samaritan. She comes to the well. She sees Jesus, and she's like, don't talk to him. Like, he's a Jew. Can't talk to them. And then Jesus speaks to her, and then he offers her such truth as we have seen right here. Um, so, anyways, the next um, little chunk, the next little chunk that um, we have to read is the next, um, it's still in chapter 4, but it's when the disciples are going to come back to Jesus. Because remember, Jesus um, took a break, or you know, wanted to rest. He goes to the well, and his disciples go into the town to fetch food. And so we're going to see that the disciples are going to um, rejoin Jesus. And then we're going to continue to see Jesus work his will. Jesus is going to continue to um, move mountains, if you will, heal the sick, um, and prove such miracles trying to prove himself. Isn't it crazy that you can tell people and you can tell people and you can go on and on, excuse me, trying to get people to believe, but it isn't until you show them, it isn't until the eyes see, and it isn't until um, it begins, like I said, it begins to benefit people to when they begin to show interest. Um, and so after we see the disciples rejoin Jesus, we're going to see that the Samaritans are going to begin to believe this lady from the well. She is going to probably go and tell her people. These people are going to be, que you know, question what happened. They're going to have growing interest, and you're going to see more and more people start to follow Jesus, and people and Jesus start to gain more and more followers as it continues on through the book of John. We're also going to read about when Jesus walks on water, and it's just going to give us a lot of information about Jesus's ministry while he was here on earth. So, I'm going to stop there for the night because my sister's birthday is today, and um, like I said, 
we do have a couple other festivities to do before the night is over. It's 9.30 here. I hope y'all have an amazing night. Um, I pray that before we go into Bible study next week, y'all go back and read that chunk again. Every time I go back and reread my Bible, I always find something that I never knew before or that I didn't get, like, I didn't fully comprehend the first time. So rereading it, actually studying it, not just reading it, but highlighting, you know, they say if you mark your Bible, it'll mark you. Um, and so, yeah, I love y'all. Thank y'all for joining in. If you were not able, able, it is the Jesus Bible. It's my sister's. I don't have mine tonight. Um, and it is the NIV version. I actually really like this. Um, but if you were not able to stay on for a long time or... You had to hop off or you just want to re-listen tomorrow or share it with a friend or something like that um then um it will be on my youtube so y'all can just go search my youtube but i hope y'all oh let's pull you up close oh i hope y'all come here colin <laughs> i hope y'all have an amazing night get over here <laughs> and uh we'll talk to y'all next thursday 9 p.m eastern center time Bye, girlfriend.